Hello guys, welcome back to another prize video for Mr. Iron Bar. So I got the lance recently and I have had the pleasure of testing it at a lot of different places. Last episode I did a throw test with the Lance of Warcast just to see how it would compare with the Dread Hunter Crossbow. And it was really good. It performed well. It was only a little bit slower than that of a Dragon Hunter Crossbow due to the Ruby Bow effects that the Crossbow has access to. So there are a few other dragons I haven't tested the Lance on, but the most important one that's left for me is the Great Ohm from Raids 1. If you guys didn't know, I did complete the original Raids 1 items some time ago, probably last year. But shortly after, they decided to release the Challenge Mode Raids which is basically a harder version of regular raids and there is an exclusive reward from the challenge mode raids which is the metamorphic dust this dust when you achieve it you can combine it with the omelet pet and it will grant the omelet the ability to be customized into other raids pets so you can get like a tecton pet a mutadile pet and all that stuff it's been a pretty long go at this point to get the metamorphic dust because the omelet is one of my favorite pets it's one of my most deserved pets so I would love to be able to go anywhere with different versions of the omelette. The Dragon Hunter Lance has the potential to make my Metamorphic Dust grind a bit easier because it should be very strong against the Great Ohm. However, there are some discussions between whether or not the Lance is better than what we had previously for Best in Slot. So the current Best in Slot weapon against Ohm's melee hand not accounting for the Lance is the Scythe of Vitter. Very expensive item for mains. And for Iron Man, even if you do have it, it does cost a lot of blood runes, 3 blood runes per attack with it. So it's not something you want to just use anywhere. But there is a bit of a discussion between whether or not the Lance is better than the Scythe at Alms Melee Hand. So this is what I'm going to be doing. So I have plenty of experience using the Scythe when it comes to killing the Challenge Bow Ohm. So while I am using the Lance against Challenge Bow Ohm, I should be able to compare them pretty easily. So let's go and find out just what is better. So there is another item I'm testing at the same time alongside the Lance and that is the Brimstone Ring. So in this video I'm also going to be covering that but uh, for now I'm going to mainly just talk about the Dragon Hunter Lance and then talk about the ring after. So here's the setup that I used for this video. So there are some differences from the original setup that I was using. I used to use a Berserker Ring and the Scythe, but now I'm swapping that with the Brimstone Ring and the Lance. So the Lance at the Great Ohm absolutely destroys the melee hand. I basically can hit what my current setup is like 56 or 7. But if you bring a bit more uh, strength switches like Tassets and the new Ferocious Gloves, you can probably hit like a 57 or 58. But these hits are a lot higher than that of the Garazi Rapier. With the Rapier, I was hitting like low 50s, like 52 I believe, tops. So the Lance, at least compared to the Rapier, is definitely more accurate and hits higher. So overall, it's just better DPS across the board. But when it came down to comparing that to a Lance, however, I would say... They're very similar, actually. So the Scythe can hit, like, honestly up to a 70, but the chances of it doing that with the three hits combined is really low. So most of the hits are really uh, more so in, like, the 30s and the 40s, and then once in a while you hit big, like 60s and 70s. Overall, compared with the Scythe, the times that I'm getting killing the melee hands, it's almost the same, virtually the same. Nothing really different in terms of time. So my own times for Challenge Mode Raid, I think it's anywhere from like, I believe around 11 minutes to 12 minutes. I think even if things go really well, like under 11 minutes by a little bit. And yeah, with the Lance, it's about the same. So I don't think there really is that much of a difference. However, I do like the Lance a lot more because it's more flexible uh, in terms of fighting own. You can switch between different styles of strategy from like... 4 to 0, it's like 4 to 1 really fast, and it switches well with magic hand to melee hand transitioning. The scythe is a bit clunky because it's a 5 tick weapon, so it does not sync synchronize as well with the ohm's attack patterns. However, I will tell you how to distinguish between when the lance is actually better than the scythe at ohm, and when the scythe is actually better than the lance at ohm. So when you are solo raiding, the Lance is definitely the better weapon. The main reason is because 
due to the nature of the Warhammer specs. So the scythe is not as accurate as the lance, but it does have a higher DPS potential, assuming the thing you're fighting has low defense. So if you are in a raid group where there's multiple people Warhammer specking, the hand is most likely going to be super low defense, so the scythe should be able to out DPS the lance in those situations. However, when you are solo raiding, you are the only person that is specking the alm hand. So there will be a lot of times where the Warhammer just doesn't land. So in those cases where you're not landing those specs, the lance should be able to out DPS the scythe because the lance is just more accurate and being able to pierce that extra defense that the scythe cannot is where the lance will be more superior. So overall for me, the lance is definitely going to replace the scythe for my metamorphic dust grinding because I'm mostly solo. And the fact that it was able to fit seamlessly into my raid setup was also nice. The flexibility and the performance is up to my expectations. And yeah, definitely motivates me to go and hunt that metamorphic dust a bit more with this new bad boy. As I mentioned earlier, another big item that I'm testing that I got from Hydra is the brimstone ring. So this ring is quite interesting because unlike most rings that focuses on one single stat, the brimstone ring is all about being a bit of everything. A jack of all trades but a master of none. A lot of situations you're just focusing on a single style. If you're meleeing, you just wear a berserker ring. If you're ranging, you just wear an archer's ring, so on and so forth. But in situations where there will be a lot of switching between attacks, different styles, maybe even like PK, but especially at raids, the brimstone ring comes to mind. There's a lot of potential here. The berserker ring is undisputed the best ring of choice for raids until the arrival of the brimstone ring. So there is a good debate. People are a little bit confused as to which one they should use from now on at this point. So obviously I tested the brimstone ring to see for myself just what kind of potential this thing's got. So first things first, let's look at the brimstone ring stats. It's got four everything, accuracy, defense, and even strength bonus. So at face value, it's basically half the stats of every other ring that you normally use from the DKs. So you get half the Berserker ring, you get half the Warrior's ring effect, you get half the Archer's ring. So that's not bad. All combined, you get some insane bonuses if you're going to be using all those type of styles. So definitely has a lot of merit to use at rates. And not only that, the Brimstone ring also has a special passive ability when you wear it. Any magic attack that you do will have a 25% chance to ignore 10% of the opponent's magic defense. On average, you will be ignoring about 2.5% magic defense every hit in the long run. So it's really interesting because against NPCs where you might splash a good amount with magic, it will allow you to bypass some of the opponent's magic defense from time to time. So. There's some really good uses. It's going to be great at the Ohm's Magic Hand. You will be splashing a little less. However, comparing that to, say, a Sears Ring, extra 6 magic attack is a bit up to debate. But then again, it's not like you really bring a Sears Ring anyways to raids. So for the most part, the Brimstone Ring is definitely better for maging in the raid situation. And besides the Ohm, it also has some interesting potential at other bosses in raids, especially Vanguards. Melee Vanguards is quite tanky, so having that ring could be quite helpful there. And another interesting place to use it at is Maging Bandos, because it will definitely help you land your freezes and your trident spells a bit more often. Overall, this ring has great potential in tri situations and also in Maging situations. Unfortunately, there's really no way to determine which ring is better for raids, just because Brimstone Rain technically helps you with every single combat encounter, including stuff like slightly better Warhammer hits, slightly better range accuracy, slightly better mage accuracy, and of course the magic defense penetration abilities when maging. And whereas the Berserker Ring has one flat max hit over the Brimstone Ring, only when you're meleeing. So Berserker Ring has a good edge when it comes to melee, but the Brimstone Ring covers as a mediocre Berserker Ring, but also covers for every single style. So it, there's really no way to compare them properly. The only thing I could say is based on the feeling and based on my personal experience, I would say the Brimstone Ring is probably slightly better than the Berserker Ring at raids. 
especially at charge roll rates, because the ability to negate some of the opponent's magic defense is actually really huge when you're maging. And based on the opinions of other players that I trust when it comes to raids, most of them would say that the Brimstone Ring is slightly better than the Berserker Ring at raids, especially when it comes to challenge mode, because defense at challenge mode is a lot higher, and the Brimstone Ring's defense negation and extra accuracy is actually quite nice. I would say that when it comes to regular raids, however, I think both rings are about even. There's really no significant difference between them, from what I can see. So that about wraps up the analysis for the Lance and the Brimstone Ring. I don't think I'm going to be covering any more in-depth uh, topics about these new items in other bosses. I'll probably just do some smaller points for some of the monsters I haven't tested the new weapons and armor on, but nothing of the scale. So one of the big reasons for the Return of Mr. Iron Bar isn't just to get the items, but is also to use them and test them and see how much of an impact it would make for my existing like pet hunting and cosmetic item goals and stuff like that. So I thought I would just share that information with you guys. Definitely not the usual type of content that I go for for a prize video. But anyways, next video is going to be back to regular progress. I promise it's going to be pretty damn exciting. But many thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later with another video very soon. Take care and bye bye.